How you doing, everyone? Today, we're going to take a quick look at Tenet. This is the latest film from writer-director Christopher Nolan and stars John David Washington, Robert Pattinson, and Kenneth Branagh. Washington plays an unnamed man who nearly ends up dead in some sort of military extraction mission gone wrong. And when he ends up not quite dead, he is recruited by a vague yet menacing government agency. He is paired up with a man named Neo, played by Pattinson, and the two of them are tasked with finding some sort of terrorist organization led by a man named Sator, played by Brana. This organization has somehow found a way to reverse the energy flow of objects so they actually travel backwards in time. And then it gets weird. So this movie has a somewhat negative reputation, and justifiably so, because Nolan decided, for some insane reason, movie theaters absolutely needed to reopen in the middle of a friggin' pandemic just so people could see this movie on the big screen. And indeed, many of those movie theaters did reopen, and they didn't make nearly enough money to make that worth it because, surprise, surprise, most people did not want to go back to a movie theater in the middle of a pandemic, Nolan, you stupid, stupid monkey! And by forcing the theaters to reopen, they probably lost out on a lot of money that they otherwise would have been paid to stay closed. So, great job, Nolan, you bag of dicks. And Nolan's need for this movie to be released to theaters is made even more bizarre by the fact that the sound mixing in this movie sucks dicks. I'm sure you've all heard rumors about the dialogue being completely unintelligible in places because the sound mixing is so bad. I can confirm that is absolutely true. And whoever did the sound mixing for this movie needs to be shot. And if they did it this way, at the behest of Nolan, he needs to be shot as well. And I ended up being very happy that I could watch this movie in the comfort of my own home with the subtitles turned on. Something I normally don't need to do because I'm not hearing impaired, but I needed it with this movie. So now that I finally had a chance to watch Tenet, there are two conclusions I can draw. Number one, Nolan is an idiot. And number two, Tenet is really good. Sound mixing aside, this is entertaining as hell. And when I'm watching movies at home for a vlog like this, I will usually take notes as I go along. And I think I ended up taking about four notes here. And the last one I took was about a third of the way through during a conversation between John David Washington and Michael Caine during his brief appearance in this movie. And Washington's character says something like, you know, the English don't have a monopoly on snobbery. And Caine says, no, not a monopoly, no. More of a controlling interest, which was a very good line. But after that, I wasn't taking any notes at all because I was just sitting back and enjoying the ride. I was far too invested in the spectacle before my eyes to even be bothered to take any notes. And of course, Nolan is very good at spectacle, as anyone who has seen Inception will confirm. This reminded me a lot of Inception, in fact. Now, the movie's idea of objects and later people somehow having their energy flow reversed so they can travel backwards in time is really weird and kind of confusing and hard to understand, but... There is actually a point early on in the movie where one of the characters actually just flat out says, don't try to understand it. And I don't think I have ever seen a movie actually do that apart from Austin Powers. I suggest you don't worry about this sort of thing and just enjoy yourself. That goes for you all too. Yes. In an odd way, this movie does have something in common with The Spy Who Shagged Me, except this is not a comedy. But you know, I did end up following the movie's instructions to not try to understand it, and honestly, I think my experience was better off for it. In spite of the awful sound mixing, this was a lot of fun. The visual and sound effects and action sequences were just amazing to watch. Watching different things play out in real time and reverse time, often at the same time, just gets absolutely ridiculous, and I mean that in a good way. And they do some fun things with the concepts of time travel and fate. There are a few moments where you will see things play out in the opposite direction that you saw them play out before, and you'll think, oh, so that's why they did that. Nothing really shocking or surprising in that regard, but it was still fun to watch. I haven't seen much of Washington's work, but he was really good in this. Like, this guy is absolutely a star. I did find it a little weird that his character is never actually given a name. He's simply known as the protagonist. But, you know, when you're that good, I guess you don't need a name. 
Brana makes a very good villain. That guy can be intimidating as hell. And Pattinson was also very good. It's easy to forget this when you're watching a lot of Twilight movies, but he can actually act, and he's very good at it. So despite my strong urges to repeatedly slap Christopher Nolan in the face until the stupid falls out, I did enjoy the hell out of this. And if you haven't seen it, I would say this is absolutely worth a rental. Just turn on the subtitles, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. All right, guess. Now it's gonna...